Senator Daines, and I'm pleased to be a uh, original sponsor of your uh, legislation. Thank you. Um, Ms. Tootin, thank you very much for your patience. You can tell that this is something members feel very strongly about. So I'm going to pledge that at the end of Senator Lee's opening statement, we are going to let you testify. Can, can you believe it? Senator Lee. Uh, thank you so much, Chairman Wyden and Ranking Member Risch. Thank you also, uh, Commissioner Tootin, for being here. Um, the Great Salt Lake is uh, uh, the cornerstone of northern Utah, and, and it's uh, an absolutely essential part of our state in every way. But we've been in an historic drought cycle, a really nasty one. And as a result of that, the lake finds itself in a really dire uh, crisis. Uh, it's an ecological crisis with really significant ramifications for the state of Utah and really for the entire western United States. Now, fortunately, the, uh, heavy snowfall uh, this past winter has provided some respite to that. Uh, but uh, for all we know, that's a respite that could prove temporary, and we can't assume that um, uh, the, the heavy snowfall from this year will necessarily continue. And, um, and in spite of the heavy snowfall that we've had this year and the runoff from it, the water levels remain really, really, really low. This, which brings me to this chart. This shows the, uh, the water level, the, the geographic footprint of the Great Salt Lake back in 1986. Um, it was a fun year, the summer of 1986. It was just finishing the ninth grade. You know, I think Wham was big, uh, parachute pants and all that stuff. But uh, uh, just as our clothing looked different then, uh, and our music sounded a little bit different then, uh, the Great Salt Lake looked different then. It was in much better shape. It occupied a much bigger footprint. Fast forward to today. This yellow area over here represents area that was covered by water in the Great Salt Lake back in 1986, and today is not. It's just dry land. Um, and you've got this feature right here, Antelope Island. Um, it's no longer even anything close to an island, because as you can see, it stands out. It's just a mountain on what's already an area of dry land. Um, now, I, it's a state park. I don't think the um, state has moved yet to rename it from Antelope Island State Park to just Antelope Mountain State Park. That would be kind of weird. Uh, but it, it goes to show uh, what this sort of thing is doing to our, uh, to our state. Um, these declining water levels uh, really threaten our economy, and they can have permanent impact on all sorts of things, including brine shrimp viability and air quality and mineral production, just to name a few. It's important to note that the Great Salt Lake does not just present a problem for Utah when it runs low like this. No, the, the impact of this goes far beyond our state. This is a regional concern, one that impacts Idaho, Nevada, Wyoming, and really most of the rest of the Western United States. So addressing the issue is going to require careful, coordinated, and collaboral, uh, 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 collaborative responses by local, state, and federal partners. It's critical that state uh, and federal and all other stakeholders have the tools that are needed to take on this monumental task of, of saving this ailing lake. My bill, the Great Salt Lake Stewardship Act, is one of the tools in the toolbox, one of the tools that will help us address the crisis currently plaguing the Great Salt Lake. The bill amends the Central Utah Project Completion Act, known as CUPCA, to allow unused budget authority originally slated for other CUPCA project features to be used specifically for conservation measures for the Great Salt Lake. The bill would give the Secretary of the Interior uh, needed flexibility to expend unallocated budget authority for water conservation projects throughout the entire Great Salt Lake Basin. Funding available under CUPCA budget authority can be used for projects that encourage water conservation, reduce water curtailments, depletion of water quality, and quantity. Currently, it's estimated that upwards of $200 million in Cup Cup budget authority remains unexpended and could be of use in Great Salt Lake water conservation. Under this program, parties interested in potentially qualifying projects may submit proposals that must, must include conservation goals, water management improvement compared to other proposals, 
a five-year project schedule and performance metrics to help us uh, evaluate the success of the project. The bill expends no new federal funding. It simply expands eligibility for yet unexpended budget authority that has already been granted to the state. So in the long run, this flexibility is going to be something that will help to preserve the ecological and economic integrity of the lake and shield Utah and the West from some of the economic and public health costs uh, uh, of an ecological disaster. The bill has received letters of support from numerous stakeholders, including the Weber Basin Water Conservancy District, the Jordan Valley Water Conservancy District, the Central Utah Water Conservancy District, the Colorado River Authority of Utah, the Nature Conservancy, Trout Unlimited, and Friends of the Great Salt Lake. I ask unanimous consent that these letters, along with a written statement of support from Gene Shawcraft, the general manager of, of CUPCA, uh, I'm sorry, the general manager of the Central Utah Water Conservancy District, with, be entered into the record. With, without objection, I would say to my colleague, and those are impressive um, endorsements, I would say to my colleague, I'll work with him. If there's any way you could wrap up in terms of your opening statements, I'd like to get to Senator Rich for his I'm finished. Thank you very oh, much. Great, great. Yep.